Right, hello and welcome to In Conversation With. Um, good to have you here with us again. It's been an incredible ride so far, and we appreciate every support so far given this uh, program. And this evening, we are joined by a man who needs no introduction from understanding to leading big ambitions. He has seen it all. Oh, he won the Africa Cup of Nations with Ivory Coast and Zambia, coached Morocco, and now head coach of um, Saudi national men's football team. Heather Renard joins us on In Conversation with Now. So I'm going to put Heather on. Heather, thank you very much for joining us here on In Conversation with. Good evening, Juliet. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's been a while. How have you been? How are you coping? Yes, I, I disappear a bit from Africa, you know, but uh, it was a plan by myself. Since uh, 2018, after the World Cup, I said uh, I need to, to have a new experience in the new continent. So I didn't know where it would be, but uh, so... You know, when you are coach, uh, sometimes uh, some teams are available. You you are not available <laughs> this time. Uh, it's a timing, you know. So I choose uh, Saudi Arabia, and I'm very happy to be over there. And um, you've had let's start from this way. We'll come a bit more to Saudi Arabia, but you've had an um, considerable achievement in your coaching career. When you look back, how does that make you feel? I'm very proud because uh, when I start my career of coaching, it was uh, 20 years ago. I didn't imagine in one second first I will be coach in Africa. And uh, I have to thanks for the rest of my life, uh, Claude Leroy, when he brought me for the first time in uh, Ghana with a Black Star in 2007. You remember perfectly, it was a, a great team. We didn't win this Africa Cup of Nations in uh, Accra, but uh, this team was um, amazing and maybe one of the best Ghana team uh, ever. And I'm so I was, I was lucky mm -hmm. to make my first step with the Black Stars of uh, Ghana. But uh, for me to be assistant, it was a bit difficult, so I learned, but uh, I needed to fly by myself. So I start with Zambia and uh, after, you know, my, uh, the different teams I was coached, so now I'm a, I'm a lucky person. Wow, and um, you, you made mention of Claude Nera. How important was the understanding you did under Claude Nera? Well, it's a, this is a key of my career because without him, uh, I will never make one step in Africa, not uh, with one of the best team uh, from Africa. You know, it's not easy. Even at this time, it was very difficult uh, to be chosen. Uh, even as an assistant coach for the Black Stars, because uh, after the World Cup 2006, the performance of the team was very high. And uh, I came between the very nice performance in 2010, quarter of final for the Black Stars. So I can say I was in the best period of uh, the Black Stars since uh, so many years. So uh, you see, you can, you can see my, my path, I'm very lucky. <laughs> but when, when you were understudying or you, know, you were assistant to Claude Lerard in so many teams, how, how difficult was it? What were some of the things that he taught you? I knew the African football perfectly. I remember we spoke a lot about uh, his career before we met because when we start working together we didn't know each other before 
So it's a bit strange, but it, it was uh, the truth. Uh, secondly, when I arrived in, uh, in Ghana, my English was uh, <laughs> average. <laughs> I don't say it's perfect now, but it's uh, used better, <laughs> except my accent. This is a real French accent. French <laughs> accent. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I make a lot of improvement because of him. And I remember it, this is uh, the story. The, my first game with uh, Black Stars as uh, assistant coach when he was in London. It was a friendly game against uh, Senegal. Uh, September 2007 and for my first training it was a day before the game I was under pressure <laughs> it was very <laughs> difficult for me <laughs> and, uh, and um, I, I'm sure we'll, we'll get into Ghana more in a, in a bit but between Zambia Ivory Coast and Morocco the jobs which one was the toughest for you? I had uh, the fantastic time. I have some uh, trouble time, like all the coaches all around the world. It's never flat. You know, you are not uh, always on top. Because when I start with Zambia, it was my first experience in Africa as a, a head coach. And... Uh, I don't know if you remember very well, but my title in a, with the Black Stars was a physical coach. Coach, yeah. Yeah. I was <laughs> physical trainer. They, they gave me the title of a physical coach. So I remember my first interview in Zambia. Do you know what they told me? They said, but you are not coach, you are a physical coach. How do you want to manage a team? <laughs> <laughs> so I was a bit upset, but you know, uh, you are a journalist, you know perfectly uh, the job, so it was a bit of provocation. But this provocation was very good for me, because I said, uh, okay, I will show you what I'm able to do. <laughs> so after uh, this experience was with Zambia was amazing, of course, but we worked a lot. It was not by chance. I heard some comments after we won the Africa Cup 2012, yes, blah, 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 the chance we were lucky. Of course, we always need luck to win one Africa Cup of Nations. But we were working with a squad, a fantastic squad, the players uh, so dedicated. So it was amazing. And uh, we can say even now to win the Africa Cup with Zambia was a miracle because uh, <laughs> we beat uh, the Black Stars in semi-final. Maybe we were not better than them, but uh, we believe on ourselves. This is, was the key of the success. After Ivory Coast, it was a bit different because I spent only 10 months with Ivory Coast because uh, I was disagree with uh, the Federation, but we won, so this was the most important. And I decided to leave. But uh, it was uh, the team with uh, the very big players, star players, completely different than Zambia. So I proved to myself I was able also to manage uh, with uh, the big stars from Africa. So in Morocco, it was also a different experience. We reached uh, 20 years after the, the, the World Cup. Welcome, yeah. Morocco didn't uh, qualify for 20 years, so it was a good uh, achievement, especially in Abidjan for the last game. <laughs> this game was amazing, especially for, for me and uh, the members of the, my staff, because we were before with this team, we beat them at home. It was a fantastic performance. And uh, of course, we are supposed to do better in 2019 for the Africa Cup of Nations, but this is football, sometimes you fail. But uh, the gap between the success and uh, the fails, fails sometimes is uh, very short, very, very short. And I'm having, so with Morocco, Zambia, Ivory Coast, different um, scenarios, but which one would you say 
you really enjoy it. Which which country? <laughs> the tree, the tree. Because uh, no, no. But I'm honest because uh, we won with Zambia, we won with Ivory Coast, but it was a short period. You imagine Ivory Coast didn't win the Africa Cup since uh, 23 years. Yeah. So it was amazing. You can say the same in uh, Ghana. You know, you didn't win uh, since 1982. It's a long <laughs> time ago. So you have to wake up. <laughs> so, uh, we're we, so we we talking about that. Uh, Ivory Coast, the pressure was very high because the people from uh, Ivory Coast, they only want one thing, like you in Ghana. It's to win. It's not to finish second or third or fourth. Is to win the Africa Cup of Nations once again. And Morocco, when you read the World Cup, you know, for a coach, for the players, this is the highest level in football. A World Cup, it's amazing. Especially in Russia, the organization was fantastic. We played Spain, we played Iran, we played Portugal. So it was a fantastic okay. moment. And I'm having, when you are talking, you mentioned a number of things, so let's just quickly talk about that. You, you talked about the physical trainer tag. Was it something that provoked you? Was it something that you didn't like? But I was obliged to accept this, uh, this because I arrived after uh, Tete, you know, the assistant coach of Claude Law, yeah. so it was normal. I'd, uh, and I was young. <laughs> I was not able to say, hey, please, me, I'm assistant coach. Or, but I was assistant coach, maybe number two. But they put me as a physical coach because I did the physical preparation also. But I was doing some trainings. Uh, the boss was uh, Claude Leroy. So I have to do what uh, the head coach wants, wanted from me. It was not, a, I was just a bit upset uh, when I arrived in Zambia, just to explain, because I was, yeah. uh, I started my coaching career in 2000, and Zambia was in 2008. So, eight years after, you are telling me I'm not a coach. <laughs> so, I was a bit upset. <laughs> anyway, but um, you, you also talked about managing big stars in Africa, and I proposed you had. Lots of big stars. You had yeah. some in Morocco as well. How do you manage? What is your trick to manage these big stars? How did it work for you? I love it. <laughs> because uh, you need to introduce uh, a human relation. We are not talking about football. We are not talking about tactic, technique physical aspect first, we have to believe on each other. So my message, I suppose to give the message for the players, a big player, a small player, the same message for everybody. We are here together, especially for the national team. We represent our country, your country, and this is the most important. So believe on me, I have to believe on you, but you have to listen what I propose to you. And if there is any problem, if you are not agree with something, come to me. We can speak, we can talk between four walls. Together, we can fight, we can uh, cry or fight, but the most important is we have to be together and to win. This and, um, is uh, did, did, the key. Did, did you fight with any of them? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but sometimes you have to be hard. You know, it's like with the kids. Maybe you are a mother and uh, you have some kids and you can't be always nice, uh, kindly. No, sometimes you have to be hard. Not because you don't like them, not because you don't love them, but because you have to let them to understand what you want from them. This is the same. And um, did, you, did you have some challenges in doing that? Because, you know, the dressing room, there are a lot of egos with um, these stars. Did you have any challenge? Of course, of course, of course. 
I remember for the first round in 2015, we won at the end, but against Guinea, two players who wanted to fight during the half time. <laughs> I won't mention the name. <laughs> it's not very important, but it was a. It was uh, two key players and uh, very important players, uh, stars. Uh, so, you know, it's like this sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but it was good because after we were under pressure, everybody was motivating and uh, we went for the second half and uh, we got a draw because we had uh, one red card. So after two games, we had only two points. It was not fantastic. I was a bad coach at this time, and uh, three weeks later, I was good. This is football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if, if you have, because it's interesting, people want to know how you've been able to manage all these eagles, because you have um, so, so many big names, so many big names, especially with Ivy Coast. And every time Ivy Coast gets close, they don't win. They get close, they don't. So people were talking about it. How do, do you have, sometimes have maybe man management, like one-on-one -on -one interaction with them? Yes, this is the most important. There is some kind of players you can't speak with uh, everybody because they will be upset. They will never listen to you. You have to take them one against one nicely and to ask them uh, what is the problem what you are thinking about it and uh, it's better to talk eyes to eyes this is a very good relation and i like this relation with uh, with the players you know i have uh, another story for you in 2008 uh, ddiu was with us and uh, he was very young he was 18 years old and uh, I remember it was uh, the training after one game, so he was not in the first 11 the day before, so he was a bit upset and uh, I was uh, doing uh, smaller games and he was not happy and he said to me, I think, uh, but uh, oh, it's not because he's this player, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> and I look at him and I said, listen, my friend, I will be the same with everybody. But uh, because he has a character, you know, Andre Ayou, he has a lot of character. But uh, he didn't know at this time I have, I had also a good character. So <laughs> because he thought I was assistant, so I won't say anything for him. But no, no, I'm not like this. So. <laughs> it's it, it, interesting, but uh, how do you think, do you think you were going to win Africa Cup of Nations that early? No, no, I can't say that. I think in football you need uh, humility, you know. If you remember exactly how we won the semi-final against Ghana with Zambia, how we won the final against Ivory Coast, like I told you before, the gap is... Uh, uh, I. I saw, I watched a few weeks ago because of the, the problem of coronavirus on the, the TV, the final of 2015, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and I never seen before. I never watched before. Uh, and when you look at this game, I think, to be honest, Ghana was better than us. I didn't remember, but when I watched the game, Three weeks ago, I said, uh, honestly, we are a bit lucky to win this Africa Cup of Nations. But this is a destiny, you know, so this is football. How do you think luck plays part in football? Yes, it is a part, but uh, you provoke the luck. You build the luck. You have to build everything in football. If you don't have a, a good discipline, a good squad, a good substitutes, for one tournament like Africa Cup of Nations, most of the time, the winners can win the Africa Cup of Nations with a bench. This, the player doesn't understand. When you are coach, you understood. 
because they are so important. If someone doesn't want to play when he's coming on the field, you really need him at this time, you won't achieve anything. So the luck, you build the luck together, you build the team spirit together, and of course, you need to be a little bit lucky, of course. But, but do you believe luck in football and has it, has it played a part in your career? Yes, I was a bit lucky, but I think I work also very hard. And uh, I don't think, uh, I don't like to talk about it, but uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's strange to win uh, 2012, 2015 with two different teams, completely different. A team from Zambia unknown from uh, everybody. <laughs> except uh, the specialist of football and Ivory Coast, of course, a big team, but uh, it was a uh, two challenge, completely different. And uh, we achieve uh, with my staff these uh, challenges. So it was, uh, it was amazing. But now, do you think um, African football must be improved? What about African football do you think must be improved? What we have to improve in, uh, in Africa is not the football. It's not the players. It's around the football. The facilities, infrastructures, organization. This is what uh, the African football needs. But uh, the players are on top. You can uh, have a look. Uh, Liverpool won the Champions League with Mohamed Salah from Egypt, Sadio Mane from Africa, Matip from Cameroon, Sadio Mane from Senegal. Three of them are in the squad and they won the Champions League before Didier Drogba, Samuel Eto, George Weah, so many players, Michael Essien. So we in, on this continent, there is a fantastic players. Now we need to put them on the perfect condition. You know, infrastructures, this is a very important. When you are playing in the very nice stadium, good organization like the World Cup, this is a, the football be, become amazing. You know, this is what it's missing a bit in, in Africa. And um, are you hoping to, or let me, let me say, what is your toughest match you've ever played in the Africa Cup of Nations? Ooh, it was against Benin <laughs> in 2019, the last Africa Cup of Nations. We were leading the game. Of course, Benin was defending, but defending well. We didn't score. We had a penalty shoot at uh, 88 minutes before we won our three games in the group stage against uh, South Africa, Ivory Coast, Namibia, three victories. We missed this penalty after 88 minutes, extra time. We didn't score and unfortunately, we were not qualified for the quarter final to play against Senegal because we lost on the penalty shootout. This it was a very tough game. It's football. Sometime, yeah, like I said before, the gap was not for us this day. And uh, <clears throat> because I think if we were qualified for the quarter final against Senegal, we we had a great chance because Senegal is a fantastic team, but uh, we had also a very good team. And um, are you hoping to return to Africa anytime soon in a capacity as head coach <laughs> of a national yes. team? Of course, one day I will come back. Of course. Now, I have one challenge with Saudi Arabia is to get the qualification for the World Cup. There is also the Asian Cup in 2023. This is also important because we have a very good team. 
In uh, December 2019, we beat the Asian champion at, at home, Qatar, for the Golf Cup. 60,000 people in the stadium. It was a great game. So we had a very good team. But now I have, we have to achieve uh, our challenge. It's to reach uh, this World Cup. And after we'll see what's going to happen, but I'm sure I will come back to Africa. Any, any maybe country, specific countries that you're looking at? <laughs> yes, I have to come back one day with one country able to win. Do you know the countries in Africa able to win the Africa Cup of Nations? Um, I, I want you to tell me. Didn't win since a long time. <laughs> 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 are, you, are you hoping to come back to Blackstar this time, not as a physical trainer, as a senior national team coach, and help them win the Africa Cup of Nations? You didn't win the Africa Cup of Nations since... Uh... <laughs> it's even Over 20 years. Uh, yeah. So, of course, it will be a fantastic challenge, but... Uh... At the moment, we can't talk about this. Uh, you know, in 2008, I think uh, when I was assistant coach, uh, we were 14th uh, position, FIFA ranking position. You know, yeah. Ghana was on top. Now it's a little bit down, but the potential of the player is still the same. There is a very good players in Ghana. So, of course, it will be maybe one very good option for me. <laughs> So, you know, I have some, some of your people who um, have followed your career and everything. People have joined in watching us and want to say a big thank you to them for watching um, Heavy Renard. And I'm um, asking the same question about if you're coming back to Ghana. But now, talk to me, you mentioned Saudi Arabia. And um, how is the job going so far? And what do you want to achieve with the national team? You mentioned you want to get qualification to the World Cup and the Asian Cup as well. Apart from that, what do you want to achieve with this team? I want to win. I want to reach uh, the qualification for the World Cup. And uh, if I have a chance to stay as a head coach in 2023 for the Asian Cup, of course, we have to go to, to win this uh, Asian Cup. It's tough, of course, but it's like in Africa. It's never easy to win. But we have a potential. We have a very good team. Technically, we are very strong. We need to improve physically, tactically, but uh, I'm very optimistic because uh, this is a, a very good country with a big potential. Do you remember, um, because uh, people, sorry, people from Africa maybe forgot. Because, you know, when you think about Saudi Arabia, I know what is in your mind. But uh, just to remind you, for the last World Cup in 2018, Saudi yeah. Arabia beat Egypt 1-0. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. forget. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> no, people, people will definitely not, not forget. But you, you have been in Africa and people, when anytime they see you, they know what to expect in terms of the quality that you bring on board. So uh, we, we can't deny that fact. But if you are picking maybe your best 11 in African, like your African squad, who will make your 11 African squad? I'm putting you to test. So we have all the time for you. We want you to tell us your best 11. <laughs> <laughs> who will make that, who will make that squad? So have his best 11 in Africa. At the moment? Yes. Oh, um, well, it can be. It, it depends on you. Your, your best uh, 11 in Africa. I think uh, I can answer to this question with uh, the players I was uh, coach, coaching. Meaning, uh, we had a fantastic goalkeeper with a Kingston in uh, Ghana. If you take uh, players from Ghana, uh, George Mensah was a uh, fantastic centre back. I had uh, Colo Touré with Ivory Coast, Mehdi Benatia with uh, Morocco. You can see 
it's a very good uh, <laughs> players. Uh, right back, Ashraf Hakimi, the players of Dortmund from Morocco. It's a very talented player, a future, a big star of football. Him was a, it's a great, uh, great, great players. On the left, uh, we had, uh, I have, uh, yeah. Sakatiene with Ivory Coast, but it's uh, always difficult. But in the middle, Yaya Touré, Michael Essien, you can put uh, Andrea Yu, Sule Muntari, Younes Belanda, Asamo Ajan. You know, I will put uh, on the bench. Uh, Jordan Ayou, because I like him. He can come after uh, 60 minutes and he will score, I'm sure. <laughs> and after Gervinho, of course, Gervinho, do you imagine uh, when you have uh, Gervinho, Gervinho in your team? Sule Muntari, Samoa Jan in front, three midfield. Uh, Andre Ayou, Michael Essien, Yaya Touré. Oof, this team is amazing, huh? On the <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going I'm gonna frame, I'm gonna frame it and I'll send it back to you with your, your West African 11. But interesting to, to, to see this. So, yeah, so you have, um, all right. So Asamoitan will be on top as in a lone striker. Yeah, three strikers, Gervinho, Asamoitan. Asamoitan, uh, Jordan. I, I said, no, Jordan on the bench because he has to come back after all. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Javino, uh, Asamoa, and... Sule Muntari. Sule Muntari, the three strikers. Okay. And I'm um, talking about Asamoa Jan. You watched yeah. him progress. And um, you've also watched Jordan, what he was doing in the Premier League this season. Let's first talk briefly about Asamoah Jan. How have you, you've seen his career growth. How has it been, I'm sure it's been a pleasure for you watching him play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Asamoah Jan is a, now is a past and uh, Jordan Ayou is a future of the, yeah. uh, of the Black Stars. But uh, I'm sure they were able to play together. So yeah, uh, but yeah. I was not coach, but uh, the quality of Asamoa Jan was a. Uh, he had, uh, I was very impressed about his timing for the header. Ooh, it was amazing. And it was a, a very good scorer, very good player, fantastic player. But I have something to tell him. He's supposed to have a better career because he was lazy. <laughs> 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 when you say he was lazy, how, how was he lazy, Kevin? No, no, for, tra for training, he's lazy for training. <laughs> he only <laughs> likes the games, but he's the most important. But, uh, <laughs> no, but it's a joke because uh, yeah. I know him, uh, he doesn't like the training. He likes uh, the competition, the game. <laughs> <laughs> But um, Jordan, are you? I'm sure you are so pleased. You, you're talking about he's the future of the national team. What can he do to even be better than he is now? Ah, he's improving. You know, it's not easy to play in the Premier League, huh? and uh, he's working very hard because he was my player with Social in 2013. He was young, very young. But uh, he's clever, not talking too much, quiet, but uh, I like this man. I like uh, his uh, spirit. Uh, Jordan is in my heart. He's one of my son from uh, the players. <laughs> what, what's so special about Jordan Heaven? I don't know. It's our relation. He has something I like on him. There is something I like on him. And uh, I'm sure he is able to do, from now to the end of his career, he will do a lot of very good things. And I hope for him, 
with his brother, they will be able to win before stopping the career of one Africa Cup of Nations because I think they deserved it. You think, um, Jordan, because Andre is the captain of the national team now, you think Andre deserves the, um, a trophy before maybe he retires, or both of them? Yes, the both of them, because they will play together, I'm sure. I don't think the coach will uh, let uh, one of uh, the two at home. But uh, yes, since uh, you can see the record of the last five Africa Cup of Nations, it's a uh, final, semi-final, quarter of final, yeah. except in 2019. But sometimes there is exception. But uh, now it's time for them. It's time for them. They have to be ready. Of course, the Federation was a bit in trouble, but I hope for Ghana it would be better. And they have a big potential to win this Africa Cup of Nations. But it's not easy. Yeah, that was what I was coming to ask you. Because you are, you're always created a winning mentality. I'll talk about that, but how how do you create a team to win an African Cup of Nations? Because you're like you're saying, it's been a long time since Ghana won it. How can Ghana win the African Cup of Nations? I think they, they were not far. They were very close. But the most important, the key, like I told you, as an introduction, when we start this uh, interview, it's a flag. The flag of the national team, the country, to be proud of the country. You represent your country. How oh, do you imagine when one game, when you are playing a game for your national team, away or at home, how many people stop everything to look at you, to watch your game? Because it's Africa, in Africa, this is what is Im amazing. The live stop for football. Yeah. So there is a passion for that. So as a player, as a coach, you always to, to think about it. We need to make them proud. We need to play for them because this is a proud of the country. You know, when we won the Africa Cup with Zambia, so many people told me you made us on the map. It was strange to hear this comment, but uh, I realized how it was important for them. They were so proud all around the world. The people from Zambia, they were so proud about it. And it will be the same for Ghana, for it was the same with Ivory Coast, for Algeria when they won the last Africa Cup of Nations. They played very well, they deserved it. And, uh, this is how to, to bring together to win the uh, one Africa Cup of Nations. So, so for you, you think the problem is not the players, but they should be able to play for the flag? Yes, yeah, the potential of the player is uh, amazing in Ghana. You have everything. So you were missing a bit of luck. You were missing, uh, I don't know, I was not inside, except in 2008, yeah. but, uh, but uh, we were not far. And uh, so it will come, it will come. Of course it will come. Now, <laughs> who will be able to win this Africa Cup? Who, who will be the coach? With which players? You know, Didier Drogba stopped his career just before I came. I wanted him to come back. He didn't come back and we won the Africa Cup of Nations. But my, be, my regret was uh, because he was not with us. I think he deserved to be with us and win this Africa Cup of Nations in 2015. Heaven, how do you create a trophy winning team? <laughs> ah. To be honest, you and me, you are able to, to respond to this question. When you arrive in Ghana, before the qualification, you are obliged first to be qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations because there is no other way. <laughs> and when you 
are on the line start for the Africa Cup of Nations, your target, what is your target with Ghana? There is only one target. You, even if you are Hervé or another coach, another coach, uh, the target for Ghana is to win. So <clears throat> the one who will achieve this performance will be very lucky with the Black Stars. But, but it's not um, easy. I repeat, it's not easy. It's so difficult. <laughs> How difficult? <laughs> How difficult? It's difficult. Everybody has to be on the same way. People around, people from the country, everybody together. This is the most important. In interesting because um, you, are, you are the master of winning Africa Cup of Nations. So um, if you say everybody has to be together before you can win an African Cup of Nations. But of the, you said, Failure and success is really like, it's, it's a bit close. But of the many things that you have failed at, which one taught you some valuable lesson? When you made a mistake to select one player, you put him in your squad because it's a very good player, but he's putting the mess in your squad. And at this time you fell. So it's better to let him at home and uh, to have maybe less quality, but a better spirit in your squad. Have you had any experience on the continent? Yeah, yes, I had, but uh, I won't mention the name. <laughs> Of but did you, have, did you have to leave the player out for maybe AFCON or maybe qualifiers? In 2012, with Zambia, we finished the Africa Cup of Nations with 22 players. Yeah. I kicked him out one player after the group stage. So for quarter, final, semi final, final, we were 22. This it was a message for everybody. The most important is the squad, is the team. It's not an individual uh, guy. Wow. And um, what is the major differences uh, did you note in your jobs with the various things that you handled on the continent? Maybe when you go to Zambia, Ivory Coast and Morocco. I will even talk about Ghana because we've spoken a lot about Ghana. What, what is the major differences that you noticed in your jobs with the various teams that you handle? The, in Zambia, the team spirit, you are, if you are working well, you are sure to get it. Their dedication for the country, for the football, for the flag is uh, fantastic, but sometimes they have less quality because they are not uh, the big players from Africa. Yeah. In Ivory Coast, the problem was they lost uh, in 2006 and 2012. So when you reach the penalty shootout and you lost the two previous Africa Cup of Nations on penalty shootout, this is here. It's working here. So maybe my toughest job was to prepare everybody to be able to win and to forego the past. This it was important. And in Ivory Coast, uh, in Morocco, sometime where we were traveling, you know, because in Morocco, the facilities are perfect. The stadium are perfect. So when we were going to play in Africa on the bad pitch, sometimes the motivation was not so high. So I have to push everybody because you need to play a very good qualification to be qualified. Don't think uh, it will be easy because the name is Morocco. So sometimes it was difficult in Africa with uh, Morocco, but uh, we were strong at this time. So. 
But when the, we read the competition, the performance of the team was very good. They didn't, uh, like we said, the, the World Cup, they didn't play since a long time. I think it was a, a great, great performance to eliminate Ivory Coast and to win in Abidjan for the last game, 2-0. This, it was a, a fantastic game. Because of the players, they were ready. They believed they were able to make it. So, you know, it's always difficult to talk about uh, circumstances, uh, details about football. You need to be inside. For the first day you start training, you build something up to your last day with the team. You put one stone, a second one, third one, fourth one, and after you build a, a big wall. But uh, it's always di always difficult to explain everything, you know, or it will be too easy if you are able to explain everything. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, <laughs> will be, everybody will be able to be coach. Huh? <laughs> now interesting because you talked about the flag how you have to play for the flag defend the country um, the quality you had to work at in Zambia now you have to mentally you have to work on the Ivory Coast national team and also Morocco as well so interesting to know the, the team that you managed but have you ever thought of managing a club side before? Yeah, yes, I was coach for the club, but... Uh, no, I'm saying now, after, after testing Africa and everything, have you, do you want to maybe go back to the club side? Oh, it's possible. I don't close any doors. I can't. You know, if your name is uh, Jose Mourinho, uh, Jorgen Klopp, uh, Guardiola, you can decide what you want. <laughs> Everybody wants you. So it's easy. <laughs> But me, I'm not in the same position. So sometimes, as a coach, you go where the people want really you, because this is the most important. If I told you I would like to be coach for this team, but if the people doesn't want me, how I can manage? I will never be coach for this team. <laughs> so this is your destiny, you know. You need to follow your way, to do your best. Wherever you are going to walk, on the same way, with the same mentality, with the same uh, rigor, this is the most important. And I'm always the same. Morocco, France, Saudi Arabia, Ghana, I'm always the same. I'm working always on the same way. I'm a professional. There is no joke. We are here to win, not to joke, not to play for fun. Yeah, we have a few minutes to let you go. But um, with, with what is happening with the coronavirus pandemic, do, do you think the Africa Cup of Nations in January um, would be a good idea? Should, should it go ahead or should we maybe reschedule it? But the most important now is would be to finish the qualifiers. And it will be very tough because for June is finished, meaning you're supposed to have one date, September, October, November. Are you able in Africa to play the qualifiers during this time? This is a question. It will be very tough, but uh, not only in Africa, everywhere all around the world, it will be the very tough because we, we are late now. So, Maybe they have to put uh, forward uh, the Africa Cup uh, nation. I don't know in June, or I'm not the one who will decide. Huh? But, uh, it will be. No, but but your opinion, your opinion is important on the African no, it continent. Will be, I think it will be difficult. No, it will be difficult. But for you, you think is maybe rescheduling it, like you're saying, maybe push it back will be the most important or the most prudent thing to do for now? If we are talking today, we can't think about football, huh? No, but yeah. we can't think about football. 
In Germany, they restart the competition today, but without anybody in the stand. Okay, it's good to finish the competition, but it's not football. It's not football. Football without fan for me is not football. It's a. Uh, it's very difficult. There is no atmosphere. There is no. No color, no music, no no dance. Like in Africa, how do you want to play one Africa Cup of Nations without fans? It's not possible. <laughs> Because, because the, the fans make make the Afcon Afcon. I'm sure I'm sure you know the, the passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My best one of the uh, my best memories will be with Ghana when we left the hotel for our first game of the Africa Cup of Nations 2008. I was new. I did not know what uh, was the uh, Africa Cup of Nations, and uh, we reached the stadium. On the long way, you know, the, the way to go to the stadium from uh, Itzlegon. We were uh, at the hotel yeah. near of Itzlegon. But on the road, it was amazing. The people in the street, the color, the flag, the cap, the everything. So I said, wow, where I am. <laughs> and since this time, I love Africa because uh, for me, this is football. You can have, uh, in Africa, you can have uh, people from one side, people from the other team together, dance together, sing together in the stadium, and the game is playing normally. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. This have is we have just like. about, yeah, we have just five minutes for you to go. And um, someone is asking a question here. He's saying, who is your best African player? At the moment, he said, "Who is your best African player that you've worked? Okay. Who is the best African player that you've worked with, and what made him the best?" There is two on the same line. I can't uh, choose between the two of them. No, no, I'm honest uh, because uh, it's Michael Lesia and Yaya Toure. Michael Essien was a, an amazing player and a good guy. I was assistant, of course, only, but uh, he was respecting me as, like a head coach. And this for a star, you know, when you are assistant, you remember this. Yeah. And on the field, he was, uh, he was fantastic. And Yaya Toure also, I had a chance to win the Africa Cup of Nations with Ivory Coast, uh, but uh, when he scored the goal against uh, Congo for the semi-final, you know, these kind of players, they are making the difference, you know. So, the two, these two players on the same line. Okay, but aside the players that you managed, who is the best African player for you? Like all time African player, not current, all time. Ooh. <laughs> Difficult. Huh? There is so many. <laughs> I want you to choose one, heavy. <laughs> there is only one, one, uh, the gold uh, ball. It's George Weir. Huh? So maybe it was him, the best player, uh, <laughs> African player uh, forever. But uh, Didier Drogba, Samuel Eto, Abedi Pelé. Oh, there is so many very good players. It's very difficult. Uh, this question is very difficult. Why, why, why would you say George Weah? Because he was, uh, you know, he won the gold ball, you know, in the uh, yeah, uh, war. Yeah. So it was the know. only African player who won this trophy. And he played, uh, of course, with his national team, it was very difficult because it was Liberia. So at the African level, uh, we didn't see him a lot. It's normal. But in Europe, what he did with uh, Monaco, Paris Saint-Germain, AC Milan was amazing. So, but you can say the same for, for so many players, you know, 
even now we have a fantastic players. Huh? Mohamed Salah, Sadio Mane, they are fantastic. I, 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 was, I was coming to that, how Salah, because definitely if you are picking maybe a player in 2019, you definitely talk about Sadio Mane, you talk about um, Salah. But how pivotal have they been for Liverpool? We've, we've seen them score goals, helping Liverpool to Champions League, and also they were on the verge of winning the Premier League for a very long time. What is so special about Salah and also um, Sadio Mane? They understood the highest level. They are working for the team without ball. The pressing uh, of Liverpool is very high all the time. But it's better uh, for the striker to press very high because when you are getting the ball very quickly, you are nearest of the goal. This is not a mathematics, it's uh, just uh, to think about it. Uh, yeah. But they are making a lot of effort. And uh, when they have the ball, they are, they are fast, they are skilled. And uh, they have uh, one center forward, Firmino. It's an amazing player to play for the team. So these three players in front of Liverpool, uh, together, they are, they are fantastic. You now think to, um... to, to choose between this year, to choose between Salah and Mane? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you choosing? Oh, I think they are on the same line, but uh, Mohamed Salah won the last year, so maybe now Sadio Mane is <laughs> deserve to win. Well, Sadio Mane won the African Player of the Year, in which was he, he has been runner in I think the three last editions or two last editions, but. Most, most importantly for you, everybody is asking the question again, and Heavy has um, answered this. They, they keep asking, are you coming back to Ghana? Are you coming back? They want you back in Ghana. So Heavy, for the last time, are you coming back to Ghana? <laughs> I before you end before, your coaching career? I'm not the one able to respond to this question. It's your one day, it will be your management, your government to decide uh, we want to bring this man or we don't want him because maybe they don't like me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, will you, if they ask you to come, will you come? Of course, like I told you before, if one day I have a chance to be able to, I said one day, because don't forget when we are making interview. I'm under contract. I have to yeah. make some challenges yeah. with Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Up to 2023. So it's not now. Please don't make <laughs> a confusion for me. <laughs> but so if you... one day I have to come back to Africa, Ghana would be one option of the option, of course. Of course. How can you refuse to be interesting about one team who has reaching all the time the last five Africa Cup of Nations, the semi-final, the final? So this is a fantastic country for football. And especially the fantastic challenge is because you didn't win since a long time. So this is a good challenge. <laughs> so you come, and, you come and win with Ghana one day. <laughs> Inshallah, come this. But heaven, finally, um, people always see you wearing that white shirt. I'm surprised you didn't wear white today. <laughs> what is so special about your white shirt? Why are you wearing white shirt every time? <laughs> but today I'm not playing a game with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So why, why, why are you always wearing white shirts on the touchline? What is so special about all your white shirts? This is a superstition. I'm not stupid. I want two African Cup of Nations with a white shirt. Do you want me to change? For what? <laughs> <laughs> huh? so, so, so you intentionally... Is, is, is it something about you the white shirt you want us to know? Do you imagine against Ghana for the final, the penalty shoot out? We missed the two first penalties. 
So, do you want me to put a, a red shirt for the next Africa Cup of Nations? I will be coach. No, it's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. Mm -hmm. So, what's special about the vice fans? It, it keeps you winning. Yeah, it's a superstition, you know. Uh, are you superstitious? Sometimes. So, then uh, now it will never change. All right, Kevin, I want to say a big thank you to you. We've taken an hour of your time. Thank you very much for doing this um, with us here on In Conversation With. Um, I'm very grateful that you accepted to do this interview. Um, it's been it's been a long time since we heard from you, and um, we're glad that you you made time to speak with us here uh, on In Conversation With on TV3. So I want to say a big thank you to you. Thank you very much, and uh, apologize for my French accent. I hope everybody <laughs> understood. <laughs> Every everybody understood it. So. Um, if you want anything, if you want to say anything, finally, you, you, you can you can do so. Just uh, to thank Scanna for the first op opportunity you give me to be assistant coach in Africa in 2007 and 2008. It was uh, my first step in Africa, and I will never forget this time because. Uh, this was the start of my uh, African career, and I was lucky to start uh, with the Black Stars. Thank you. All right, coach. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. See you.